and has accompanied many famous artists like David Archuleta and Keanu Rice. She has performed all over the world, including Italy and Carnegie Hall. Jessie Kay began her involvement in the Miss America organization as Miss Utah's Outstanding Team 2014. She speaks to schools, volunteers with organizations such as Brain Balance and the Ivy Foundation, performs across the state. Her platform, Finding Value Within, which educates others to find their inner value as a way to combat feelings of inadequacy. She's excited to be representing the state of Utah this September on the Miss America stage in Atlantic City, so she just did that. I'm going to turn the time over to her. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. I've never really spoken to something like this, so just bear with me. We're going to have fun, but I, I am very excited to be here because, like she said, I'm from Beaver. I really appreciate small towns and communities that are close-knit, so I, I really understand how you, how you guys feel. And my, my parents grew up working in a small community and in a small county, and we understand that it can be it can be hard at times, so I really appreciate you guys and everything that you do for your community. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself. Usually I have a presentation, so I'm just going to do my best to describe describe myself so you can picture it. Um, like she said, last September, I, well last September, this September, just barely, I competed at Miss America and it was a really, really cool experience back in Atlantic City. And my whole family came out. It was a great experience. My mom is about this big. She's blonde, so we don't look anything alike. She's very fair skinned. My dad is really tall, and he used to have brown hair, but now he's bald. So <laughs> we love him. Um, I, I am a senior at Brigham Young University right now. I love to watch football. My best friend is the center for BYU, so he's the one that snaps the ball. So I go to every football game I can. I really enjoy training for our Cougars. I know you guys might have mixed feelings up here towards Salt Lake, but BYU is the true blue, so I'm going to be here training for them. I have been playing the violin for 17 years. I started when I was three years old. And I was speaking to the sheriff, I believe. Yes? The sheriff? I was speaking? Yes. OK. And I was, we were talking, and he asked me, you know, like, why do you speak about what you speak about? And we kind of got chatting about anxiety and about life, and he asked me about my schedule, and I thought back and I was thinking, from the age of three, I was traveling at least an hour both directions to take violin lessons, and that was just a part of my weekly routine. And being from Beaver, that was definitely a weird thing. No one did that. And it separated me from the time I was little. And growing up, things just continued to be weird. I did things like everyone else. I showed stock, and I showed sheep and horses and pigs, and I milked a cow. I was a true beaver girl. Um, but I did have that music, which separated me from my classmates and from those around me. And so that's, that's the picture perfect, Jessica. But I want you to get to know me when I was younger. So in second grade, I was the tallest one in my class. I'm not a short girl, if you can't tell. I was the tallest one in my class. It's taller than most of the fourth graders, boys and girls. And I had ears that stuck straight forward, like this. And I haven't lost a tooth, which in second grade, that's a big deal. It's a really big deal. I didn't get to have my name on the sticker chart yet. But I, I got a lot of nicknames for my ears and for my glasses. In third grade, the bullying became so intense that I actually had plastic surgery as a third grader to get my ears fixed, to look what was normal, and to look like everyone else. But the bullying didn't stop there. <laughs> now I had plastic surgery and I, I wasn't comfortable with who I was. And I continued to be different through my music and I wasn't really involved in our sports athletic community. And it, it just was kind of hard. And I never really had my group of friends. This all accumulated. I was still the tallest one. I wore glasses. I had braces. I like an awkward teenager, as most of you know. And this accumulated to the point of sixth grade. I was a 12 year old. I developed an anxiety disorder called trichotillomania. And if you've heard the phrase, I'm so nervous I'm going to pull my hair out. Have you heard that phrase before? It's real. It was very, very real for me. And I had bald spots in my head that were bigger than a quarter. They were, they were very large. And hair is important as a 13 year old girl. 
and it, it, just, it was very hard. One more thing to set me apart from the rest of my group and my community. And I was so frustrated because I would ask my mom, I'm like, why am I so different? Why can't I fit in? And she said to me, you're just fine. I love you. God made you perfect the way you are, which is great. Parents are awesome. But after maybe a year and a half of this, I decided that I couldn't take it anymore. And I didn't want to deal with it. And I would sit in my room and subconsciously pull my hair out. Didn't really know what I was doing. Finally, they convinced me that we need to go talk to somebody. Go talk to somebody about this. This is okay. And I, I kind of decided to see our counselor in Weaver. And he said to me, well, I told him how I was feeling. And he said, yep, yeah, you're different. And I just bawled. Like, that is not what you're supposed to say to me. My mom told me I wasn't. <laughs> um, but he said, yep, yeah, you're different. It's okay. You can do this. And we talked things through. And I realized there's a quote from Dr. Seuss, and so I, I talk to kids all the time, so I really like to use Dr. Seuss, but it says, today you are you, that's truer than true, and there's no one alive who's newer than you. And I love fake words that I can remember like that. No one is newer than you, and if the whole world was me, that would be a mess, because everyone would never be on time, and they would all play music, and no one would be able to do anything else. So what I do as Miss Utah is I share my story, which is different. Most people don't think of Miss Utah as having bald spots. And um, I really get close to the communities that I speak with. And what, what it came down to for me is, A, number one, accepting myself, and understanding that I was different, and number two, sharing that with other people. And I think that's the thing that most people don't understand. It's really easy to accept yourself, but when you accept yourself, you kind of turn inward, and it's very easy to forget that other people are struggling as well. Um, trichotillomania is an anxiety disorder that is classified in the obsessive, compulsive, and related disorders. So OCD, things that I'm a perfectionist, and I really like things to be like my season rose, um, volumes of five, they've got to be always on five, they can't be like 2030, <laughs> even if 25 is too loud. So, um, and it, it also, I mean, pulling your hair out is very specific. It's a very common disorder. It is a bodily focused, repetitive behavior. And this can come out in any way, biting your nails, in tapping your leg, or tapping like this, or like this. These are all anxiety disorders. And I'm not saying that everyone has one, but I think we all have hints. And we can all work together to focus on how to overcome those. Um, one in two people, so 50% of people will struggle with something like this. Whether it's OCD, whether it's a bodily function disorder, whether it is anorexia or bulimia, the ones that we really talk about, the ones that are associated with mental health. I really don't like that term. I don't like the term mental health because it sounds scary. It sounds like, don't go to the, don't go to the doctor, don't talk about that. That's kind of taboo, we don't really discuss those kinds of things, so I like to add a few letters and it's mentally healthy. And there's so much more to being mentally healthy than being worried about pulling on your hair, or if you can eat that food or not, or if you can take this test because you don't know if the person next to you can handle your leg shaking. Um, so it's, it's about finding what you love, it's about finding who you are, whether that, whether you need some help to get there, if you need to talk to a counselor, if you need to Get, a, get some medication. If you need to explore and find what makes you happy, those are the things that are going to help you overcome the challenges that you face in life, regardless of what they are. And so it's very important to be open about what you're facing. I like to keep a journal. I like to make sure that I know what's making me happy and what's stressing me out. And I really suggest that anyone that is struggling with this does the same. And it can be totally private. I hid mine underneath my mattress between my box, like the box spring, and in between a mattress. So no one could find it. And I still have it to this day because I can go back and see what, you know, what is making me feel these ways and what makes me happy. And ultimately, it really did come down to my music. It was my voice. I have a speaking voice that people can understand, but I have a playing voice that everyone can understand, regardless of race, age, gender. And it really has been an aid with this microphone. So, um, I really, I'm trying to think if I want to 
say anything. Oh, if you don't feel like you relate to my message very well, and I hope you feel like you can, because everyone faces challenges, even if it's not the same as me, I want to let you know that you can help people around you that you may see doing this. One of the worst pieces of advice that I was ever given is stop. Just stop, pull your hair out, stop. And it's not something that people who suffer with this kind of thing can do. You can't just stop. It's not that easy. It's much deeper, and you need to be able to communicate it out. So I would suggest that you take the time to understand those around you. Take the time to listen to how they're feeling. Take the time to understand that you can't just stop. And also offer to not necessarily aid them yourself, because you might not be the person. I love my mom dearly, but I cannot take advice from her because we are both too headstrong. So offer to help find help in another location, if possible. And there's lots of different places. One of the main resources that helped me was, it's called, um, let's see, I don't want to say it wrong. BFRB, so Bodily Focused Repetitive Behaviors work, and it has all of the information about my disorder and about disorders like mine and where I could find help. And it was very good for me because it was an outside source. And that was all I needed was somebody to tell me, tell me a website and I could figure, figure that out. And what I do now is I share this mostly online through a hashtag. And I don't know if you guys use hashtags or you can see those. And you're like, oh my gosh, one more thing to read on the social media posts. But my hashtag is findValue, B-A-L-Y-O-U. Because values can be placed in money. It can be placed in something that's useful. But value with Y-O-U is something within you. And for me, that's my music. And for other people, that's sports. It's dancing. It's serving a good thing with your family, and those are the things that are going to help you through those challenging times. So you can share what makes you happy on social media through that hashtag, and that way we are putting some positivity into the media and helping people who don't understand themselves. If all they can do is go through social media, they're seeing something positive, they're seeing reinforcement, they're seeing something happy in the world when all they can see is negativity. So I want to take some time just to um, play for you because that is my voice and hopefully that's okay.